All right. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is the results of my testing slash detail review for the Eco Rico S5, and we're gonna go through some stuff and uh, see. Uh, just a few notes. Uh, one thing I do like doing about these. Yeah, I appreciate some of the websites just just do a little basic review so you can see what's going on with the product. I really like the idea of doing the more deep because the more time you spend writing on one of these, the more conclusions I can make that would really help you out on knowing what to expect later. So that's really why I'm doing this and hopefully it helps out. Uh, things that I, you know, from the detail review that maybe didn't come through yet, the braking's still not great, as we'll talk about. Um, customer service is probably the one thing that I touched on a little bit. Um, it took me about two months to get a new charging socket for this scooter between the first correspondence and finally getting it. Um, and I think if I wouldn't have followed up last time, I wouldn't have gotten it at all. So Eco Rico had a really good reputation for customer service prior to uh, when the, you know, I've seen other reviews that had good luck. I didn't really see that, unfortunately. So I, I just have to put that out there as a warning. I'm not too paused, not too comfortable about recommending Eco Rico from the customer service standpoint. So let's get into the results. All right, so here's the first range test I did. We're gonna do a range test and uh, deliver a package with the Eco Rico S5. So I'll deliver the package, then I'll see how far it goes. And this one I did an average of, you'll see it here on the end of it, uh, I got about 11.5, 11.6 miles. My average speed was 12 miles per hour and I topped out at a little over 22. Uh, there was a downhill. Uh, it was 52 to 50 degrees and there was six to eight miles per hour wind from the north northwest to north northeast. Uh, the motor temperature was 105 degrees at the end of the test. So it's a little bit high for the Eco Rico, honestly. Um, I think that has to do maybe some with the, the uh, smaller diameter wheel, maybe. I, I don't know exactly. Um, I'm not sure. Let's see if we'll climb it. Oh. Oh. I'm working. I'm working. I'm working. I'm working. I'm working. Looks like we're 10. Yeah, I guess that's still successful if one gets down to 10 miles per hour. All right, so wrapping up this range test, of course, the Eco Rico does not have a headlight, so I had to use my add-on headlight, though you can see the display there pretty well. Range test number two. Uh, the average was about the same, 11.8 on, on the odometer on the scooter versus 11.7 on GPS. Uh, my average speed was higher this time at 15 miles per hour, mostly because I was more consistently on the bike path and I know that it's okay to ride on the bike path. I checked the regulations on that. Uh, it was from 53 to 55 degrees with one to two miles per hour of wind, kind of west to north, not, not really in my face or anything. Uh, the motor temperature at the end of the test was 108.5 degrees. So pretty consistent between the two tests on the motor temperature at the end of the test. And really everything is quite consistent to be honest. This is a wrap up of the test. The battery is pretty much exhausted and it's gonna click over to 11.7 there in a second. There it goes. All right, so we're gonna do a range test of the Eco Rico S5 and I have a backpack on with an extra bunch of weight. So I'm close to the max weight. Let's 
So it looks like showing 16.8 to, to 17. Let's see what the actual GPS reading is on the uh, speed right now with this. I'm gonna take this off for a second. That's a max speed. This one I did with a, I tried to do a maximum weight test. I'm gonna do this differently in the past, in the future because it was really hard to ride with a backpack on like this. But I still got right at 10.6 miles. Uh, average speed was lower, 10.7, even though I was on the bike path. So that's about a four mile per hour drop from a very similar route without the backpack on. I still got a top speed of over 18. There's some downhill sections as well. Temperature was 60 to 63 degrees, seven to eight miles per hour wind from the north northwest, so kind of a crosswind. So I don't think it, because I kind of did out and back, I, I probably canceled out. Motor temperature, as to be expected, was 121 degrees, higher with the higher weight rider and basically more strain on the on the scooter. So you can see the average of the three range tests, and that includes, this average includes the higher weighted rate, uh, range test, a little over 11 miles, which you probably don't think is great, but it's about what EcoRico is advertising, 10 to 20, and, uh, jeez Louise. And uh, so, I mean, I can't, I can't really complain about it. I mean, I don't know if I wish it would go further. It's not bad for what it is. I think they could, with the size of battery, they could take up some space. They could use that space, so they could have reduced the weight of the scooter a little bit more. But I don't know. I, I like that they're kind of truth in advertising, which is pretty unusual with these scooters. So here we go to some acceleration tests. So this is just some footing of the footage of the acceleration tests. And the one thing I did this time around is I timed the acceleration tests versus um, versus just trying to estimate the speed because it's pretty hard with most of the speeds changing. You know, it's right in between. I do my best to guesstimate it. And I'll be honest, I forgot to estimate what the top speed was. As I'm editing this video, I'll probably go outside and run a couple runs and put in what that speed was. I think it's going to be around 13 to 14 miles per hour. So 6.75 seconds to 100 feet. Not bad. I think it's pretty, I mean, it feels spunky. It's a, the motor, as I've said before, is pretty much the high point of this scooter. So let's move on to braking test, the low point. As you can see there in the braking test, it's 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 not great. Now, my average braking distance from 16 and a half miles per hour, so I was trying to beat it. It's what I was topping out at around this testing time. Uh, was a little over 49 feet. So that's not that's not awesome. <laughs> and the one thing with the there's a lot of drag with this drum brake on the Eco Rico, and. I can, you can increase the braking power, but then you increase the drag even more. So I was kind of in the middle ground between drag that might be reducing range and braking performance. So, and the, because these smaller wheels, when you, when you crank up the brake, drag and kind of responsiveness, it locks it up really fast and easy. I didn't feel any of the regenerative braking that's supposed to be occurring with this scooter occurring. So that was kind of a bummer. All right, so I'm just gonna do a wrap up here. Wrap it up, about time. All right, so the, the wrap up on, on the Eco Rico is, is some of the faults I saw in my initial review. The suspension, it's really a smooth, a smooth path uh, scooter. It, the suspension, takes off minor perfection imperfections in the road, but doesn't take out much. And I frequently bottom out the suspension and I weigh 175 pounds. And, and that makes, uh, sometimes when you bottom out the suspension, I think it's because of the flat profile of the tire, it's really loud. Like it makes a loud pop noise, which is kind of disconcerting. Um, 
again, as I kind of mentioned in the acceleration portion, the high point of this is really the motor. Not a noticeable difference in top speed on the when I had the extra 70 pounds in my backpack. Um, the top, I, the acceleration did suffer, and the overall speed during the test did because there were some there were some minor bumps and hills. But you know, especially when you're fresh charge, the top speed wasn't greatly reduced, so it was hard to ride with the backpack. Um, if you were somebody that was built and that weight, it'd probably be easier to ride. Um, I really feel like it should have a headlight. That's really, you know, there's some, for the price point of this scooter, which MSRP is around 1099 US dollars, it's frequently on sale for much less than that, 699 to 799 I get this on that reverse auction deal, so I got it pre-owned for a little under 600 um, But there's some positives to it. It kind of supports a tinkerer, the space in the battery compartment, letting you wire it in there uh, to change the speed limiter. Um, it's not a bad scooter. It's not one I'll be keeping my personal fleet, to be honest. Um, but it has some features. You know, the lock hole is pretty cool. That's I, it's the only scooter I've seen to date that has that designed in there, which is a pretty smart feature. Um, but anyway, I hope this helps make a decision on this scooter, and you know maybe what to expect if you get it. And thanks a lot for watching, and hope to see you next time. Thanks a lot. Catch the wave.